Right, so gas line time. So this is uh, one of the gas lines I'm using which is going to go to the oven. Uh, this was my first attempt at bending the copper tubing which didn't go overly well but it's perfectly safe to use, it just doesn't look too neat. However, this one over here was my second attempt when I'd had a bit of practice um, and it came out a lot better. So it goes to a flexi hose which goes to the gas cylinder at the back and this will have a gas locker to um, keep the gas cylinder enclosed in case it leaks and it goes to a compression fitting adapter there which is a brass sleeve that the hose can go on and then it connects to this which is the control box so basically this isolates all the different things that are going to be gas powered so the reason there's four of them is it will go oven and then it will go gas heater, gas light and then also the gas shower so they can all be cut off individually if you need to and uh, I'm going to show you how to do a compression fitting on a gas line. Okay so I'm going to do a little tutorial here on how to trim and cut copper gas lines. So this one here has been cut with a hacksaw so it's got a very very rough finish and if you were to try and have a compression attachment onto the end of this it could leak because of the rough finish that it has. So what I have is one of these tools here so this is a copper cutting tool, if I can get my camera to focus. So inside you can see there are two wheels and a cutting blade and an arrow telling you which way to rotate it once it is on the pipe. So all you do with one of these is you clip it into place, it literally just goes in and it will go in it is like that. Nice and tight, you can see it's gripping it in there. And then all you do is rotate this and you'll feel it start to grip as the blade is cutting into the copper line and you just keep turning it and turning it and turning it. Tricky to do with the copper line swinging and spinning in my hands. But you turn it, turn it, turn it until, hey, there we go. So this here is the end that was cut by the hacksaw. And if I turn it around, here is the end that was cut by the pipe cutter. And you can see it is nice and smooth and it is curved and it will make a perfect attachment for a compression fitting. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to fit um, a compression fitting onto a gas line. So this is a eight millimeter copper pipe, which is pretty standard for all the kind of camper van things that you might be using. And this is what's called a compression fitting. So this is an adapter that will go from a hard copper pipe in one side to a flexi hose on the other. But the actual compression part happens with inside. So inside one of these, you'll have one of these. So this here is called an olive. Now, other countries call them different things, but here in the UK, they're called olives. They will typically may be made of copper or brass. In this case, it's a copper one. So what we do with this is we pop the nut on first onto the pipe, and then the olive will sit very snug on the pipe like that and then we've got the adapter end here so you push the copper pipe up inside of this and then when you push this all together the nut is pulling the olive up and we get the thread going being careful not to cross thread it reminds me of when I was an apprentice mechanic every time I used to tighten anything I'd always have the old boy John going don't cross thread it so I guess he kind of uh, drilled that into me so anyway, when you're tightening these, you don't want to over tighten them because um, if you do, it can actually cause a gas leak because the olive has been compressed too much. So really these could come with torque settings to make it easier, but uh, I haven't got one of those. So basically, I'm just gonna do it with the spanners. I'm not using massive spanners and I'm holding it kind of in the middle rather than right at the end so I don't have too much torque and we just keep going like this, compressing the metals together, squashing that olive, making a nice gas tight finish. And uh, yeah, hope for the best really. So it's a bit tricky to kind of explain how tight to do one of these because the, the tendency would be to over tighten these. And um, some people say you do it finger tight and then half a turn, other people say more. Um, I'm opting for a little bit more. It still feels fairly loose. It's just beginning to bite properly now, 
but because it's copper and brass it's very soft metal and it compresses very easily and if you overdo it it's, uh, it's going to cause problems so that is now on that's nice and tight it's not moving it's not sliding around and uh, the best way to test really is just turn the gas on and uh, listen and smell for any leaks so uh, obviously once it's connected to something because the gas will just come straight out of the top here but you get where I'm going okay so gas line is it all in place and I've put the line on live for what will connect up to the oven and we shall see if it works right first time testing the oven since it's been installed hey beautiful okay now to try the actual oven part look at that hey <laughs> low, high, and off. <laughs> what, what have you done? Don't, I'm so sorry. It's okay. What have you done? Nobody moved. Did you oh. pick the Cocoa Pops up the wrong way up? <laughs> Did you pick the box up upside down? Maybe we need a and, bowl. And what has happened? This is Schrodinger's cocoa pops. They are both all over the place and still in the bag. Really? Happened, Jolie. <laughs> what oh, did you do? Man. I picked the box up upside down. All in your clean van. I've literally only just made that bed, as in literally built it, um. and you've already <laughs> okay, assaulted it. Elise. You gotta flip the bag the other way up. I know, I know. You gotta do it. See what, oh, milk this is true. Can you can you do it? Oh yeah. Well done. Well done, Jolie. Stop videoing. Hey, Mark. You looking forward to the hot chocolate? Oh. Welcome to cooking with Rachel. What are we making, Rachel? making mild chocolates with whispers. And what is a mild chocolate? It's a hot chocolate for Alex Juice, but he only likes it mild, so you have bits of whisper. Looks lovely. Okay, so Rachel has asked Mark to go and get some chocolate for the uh, hot chocolates that she's making. But he's been gone for quite some time, so we're just going to have a look and see if we can find him. Uh, guys, we need to find Mark. He's been gone for ages. I haven't seen him for a while. When Rachel said send him to the car to get some chocolate, so... Should we try this? Yeah. Alright, come on. Uh, don't know. Is he in the back? I doubt he's in the boot. Oh. You okay? You're right there. You're right, Mark. I think he's dead. Are you okay? Close the boot. Okay. Alright then. Alright. Um, okay. That's what you want. Yeah. yeah. See you in the morning. Yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> Why? I don't know, I just... Are you inept? Yes. Why have you got to move your pants there? There you go. Well? I was just a bit scared because I couldn't see what was going on. I'm totally trusting you not to burn me. It wouldn't be the first time. No. <laughs> got, a, got a little visitor here. <laughs> he just, how are you doing? He didn't knock, he just... <laughs> I, think, I think this dog lives here now. 